What's up, Sonic Academy? Ableton Certified Trainer Paul Lasky, also known as P. Lask, here with you today to talk a little bit about Ableton Live 11, which has finally come out. Uh, I want to get you guys on board and just talk about what to expect in your first 10 or so minutes opening the software. Maybe you went to Ableton.com and you watched that cool promo video they put together and you're wondering, where can I find all these new features, take comping, MPE controls, etc. Uh, let's spend a couple of minutes together and I'll walk you through how to find the new features, how to access and use some of those, and we'll get you going with Ableton Live 11. Be sure to check out my Ableton Live 11 beginner course. It's going to be a two-level course on Sonic Academy, which I believe is debuting today. So um, yeah, definitely check that out. If you're brand new to the software, we're going to cover you. We've got a whole track that we're going to put together together in Ableton Live 11. All right, well, let's jump in and take a look at where we can find some of these new features. Um, first off, let me play a little groove I came up with here in Live 11. And uh, the first thing that comes to a lot of people's minds with this Live 11 update is the comping, right? The quick comping, the quick takes. Uh, how do I access that? Well, let me show you. I actually recorded a couple of different takes of this bass line that's coming in right now. You can't see them right now, but if I right click on the track and I select show take lanes, or I can use the key command here, option command U on a PC, I believe that would be alt control U. Um, that'll open up these take lanes where I've recorded these separate takes. So I had this loop lane or the loop brace set up and I just recorded a few times within the loop brace. All the notes look perfect because I have record quantize turned on. I'm not that perfect. But then what I can do is if I want to take different parts of these takes and add them to the main track up here, which shows up above the take lanes, all I have to do is either with my pointer tool, I can highlight a segment of one and just press enter. And then it'll add that to the main track up here. Let's maybe add, I like what I did at the end of take two here. I can also switch to my pencil tool and just draw right across and it'll automatically add that. So now I've got this hybrid take. Mostly I'm using take one, but I got this little ending flourish on take two added to the end there. If I wanted to add something from take three, I simply just pencil tool, draw right over it. It'll add it to the main track. When I'm done, I can right click and click show take lanes again, or use that same hotkey to hide the take lanes. Now this is, obviously I did this with MIDI, but this is gonna work with audio as well when you record audio in. Now, regarding some of the effects in the browser, if we open the browser, um, the first thing you'll notice in the categories is they've added two new categories. We have grooves and templates. Grooves is essentially gonna give us access to all of the groove pool presets, which we can drag and drop down here into the groove pool. I've got a couple custom ones in there already. If you have created any custom ones and saved them, those will show up on this list as well. You also see templates. This is gonna show us a bunch of preset templates that come with the stock version of the software. Things for uh, you know, recording onto 16 tracks, for mixing, um, for using a vocoder with a synth even. And then these are some custom templates that I've made here that I've imported into this folder. You'll find that folder in your user library if you're trying to import your own templates. If we go to the audio effects, you can see that the audio effects now have been subcategorized into folders here, which I think is really handy. Uh, the new effects, some of the new effects, if we go to pitch and modulation, we have our brand new chorus ensemble effect, the new phaser and flanger effect, which sounds amazing. I'm actually going to try throwing that on my e-piano right now. We'll see how that sounds. Oh, I've also got spectral resonator there on deck. Let's solo that. And you can hear already right off the bat that phaser just sounds so much more clean, so much more phaser-like. You can change the center frequency, add some feedback. Switch it to a flanger. Maybe speed it up a little bit. Very, very nice sounding. It's also got a built-in vocal doubler, or a doubler you can use on vocals or anything else. Reminds me of the uh, old vocal doubler uh, hardware effect. And then the uh, new spectral resonator and spectral time, those have been getting a lot of uh, a lot of attention lately. You can find those under delay and loop is where you'll find spectral time. And then under reverb and resonance is where you're going to find spectral resonator. I threw spectral resonator on this e-piano. Let's just see if we can make something of it. This is an interesting effect where it's basically going to break the sound up into partials 
and then cause those partials to sort of modulate and resonate. You can adjust the frequency or the pitch at which it, they do that. Or you can turn this MIDI button on. I actually routed it so that the notes from my bass line will come in. Let's scoot this over so we can see. We'll come in and re-pitch the resonance. So I can get sort of like a hybrid dry wet feel here. Let's see how this sounds in the mix with everything. So add some interesting tonality to some of your sounds. There it is 100% wet. Following the pitch of the bass there. And then the spectral time, I was experimenting with that here on this percussion loop. This is again gonna break the sound up into partials, but then it's gonna delay those partials in different ways and allow you to do things like repitch them. So here's my dry percussion loop. Start from the top here. If we turn this on, very wacky. So one of my favorite things about this is this tilt control, which will kind of adjust the pitch of the delays, essentially adjusting the delay times from low to high or high to low to give you this kind of pitch sweep effect as it plays, which I think sounds really cool. There's also this freezer mode thing. If we have that on and then we click this freeze button, it'll just freeze that moment of spectral delay there. You can have that onset rhythmically. If we go to re-trigger, it'll detect the transients. We can manually freeze it by clicking the freeze button. So you can add some interesting just spectral textures um, with random delay times here or dialed in delay times. Um, next, let's jump down here to one of these MIDI clips. This is one of my favorite new features that I don't think has gotten a lot of attention yet is the scale option down here, the MIDI um, scale locking. So I wrote this track, I believe in A minor. So if I wanted to see all the notes in that specific scale, I can click on a clip, or in fact, what I'm gonna do here is right click on my bass track, I'm gonna select select track content that's gonna highlight all of my clips. Then I'm gonna turn the scale button on, and I'm gonna select my scale, which was A minor. All white keys, pretty much. And then if I open this up, let me turn this fold button off, you can see that within the piano roll, all of the notes in that scale get highlighted with the color of my clip, which is really handy. So I can still see all of the other notes chromatically, but only the notes in that scale get highlighted. If I wanna collapse the piano roll down so it only shows notes in the scale that I choose over here, I can click this scale button and then I can see that it collapses it down. So this is great for like writing in bass lines quickly or step sequence patterns that are all in the right key. Or if you have trouble writing chord progressions or melodies in the right key, this is gonna be really handy for you, I think. So this is amazing. And uh, another couple of things here while we're looking at MIDI clips, let me just select one of my clips. You notice there's been a little bit of a facelift in this area over here. Um, let me play this back. But you can see here, we've got these three tabs that show us different views in the clip view. So this is gonna give us your standard note information where you can do things like reverse and invert, set your notes to legato. We've got the ability to randomize velocities in different ways as well. Um, let me extend my velocity editor, which looks a little bit different here. If I adjust the velocity of one of my notes, I can use this velocity range slider to give it a range in which it will randomly trigger that velocity every time this note plays. So it'll trigger something random between a val values of about 64 to about 90 or so. And if I bring this down to a negative value, it's gonna go in the opposite direction essentially. So every time that note hits, it's gonna trigger a random velocity somewhere in that window. Another thing I can do is set a range of randomization for all the notes. Let's select all of them by pressing Command A. I can set a range of randomization and then if I click randomize, it'll randomize all my velocities for me. This is gonna be really useful, I think, for hi-hat patterns and things like that that are very repetitive. I'm gonna undo that and reset it back. Then we have over here our clip envelope. So this is all the old clip automation envelope stuff that you've seen probably in Live 10 before if you've used it. Um, all the same information here, it's just kind of now within this tab. And then here we have our expression controls. That was the other big feature that was kind of touted on Ableton's website was the MPE expression controls that they've added to a few of their instruments. They've also added that to every MIDI clip and you have the ability to kind of add MPE information in down here if you want to custom automate it. So for example, I'm using Wavetable for this bass sound and there's a whole new MPE section over here where we can set up things like slide and pressure or aftertouch from our MIDI controllers to modulate different things within the synth. So I actually set this up so that pressure is gonna modulate filter one's frequency. 
And if I go into one of these notes, let's say this note right here, if I click on it, you see it highlights it. And then if I go down here to the pressure lane, I can actually add in a little envelope on that note where it's going to adjust the pressure as if I was holding a key down and applying more or less pressure over time. And we'll take a listen to how that affects the filter cutoff. You could hear the movement there on the filter cutoff and you can actually see it on wavetable reflected. See it move up and down there. So even if you don't have an MPE controller, you can still get in here and use these expression controls to modulate individual notes, which is really cool. So to get some modulation, some movement on your synths on individual notes. Now you will need to make sure that whatever instrument you're using, if you're using a plugin or if you're using a stock Ableton instrument, that it does support MPE. Otherwise those pressure and slide parameters won't really do anything. You also need to make sure that slide and or pressure are set up to actually modulate something within your modulation matrix on your synthesizer, whatever that happens to be. I know Ableton has updated uh, Wavetable, I think Simpler, and there are one or two others, I can't remember off the top of my head, but a few of the instruments have been updated with MPE expression controls, which is very, very cool. And then the last thing I wanted to talk about here is some of the updates they did to racks, which I think is really incredible, one of my favorite new features. I don't think I have a rack in this uh, project, but let's just take these effects here. I've got my electric piano with a couple of effects after it. We're going to group these together, Command G or Control, Control G. And you can see when I put things together into an instrument rack like this, and you'll see it's the same case on an audio effect rack, a MIDI effect rack, etc. We've got a few additional buttons here that show up. So let's open up the macro controls and uh, let's map out a couple macros, maybe the filter frequency and the resonance and maybe the filter drive. Sure. So I've got these three different parameters mapped. And um, what I can do from here is actually add, if I want to, I can add more macro controls. We can add up to 16 macros on racks now. Or if I hit the minus button here, I can subtract them down so I only see a few. You can go down to just one if you want to. Uh, let's go here to four so I can see the three that I mapped. And then what we can also do is use this macro snapshots feature, which, which I think is really cool, especially for like sound design or just like changing your sounds in real time. So if I play this sound back, Let's start, start from here. And I open the filter up a little bit more. This is a high pass filter. Let's maybe boost the resonance a little. Turn up the drive a bit more. So I'm distorting it a little bit. I've changed the sound up a little bit. Let's make sure it doesn't clip. I'll just turn my volume down. But I can set this up and if I like how these sound, how the sound is with these macros the way they are, I can add these as a new variation. Or another thing I can do is instead of moving them manually, I can just click this new random button that'll randomize the positions. Totally changes the sound up there. I can add it as a new variation. And then I can trigger these variations by clicking the little playhead here. Get some nice bass in there. Maybe turn the drive down a little. We'll save that as a new one. And we can toggle between these again, just using the playhead here, which I think is awesome. So yeah, that's a handful of the new features, at least the big ones to kind of get you going with things. There's obviously a lot more than I could cover here within just 10 or 15 minutes, but if you want to see even more, you can always go up here to the help menu and select help view, and you'll see there's a whole section here, what's new in Live 11, and you've got a list of every new feature, every new effect. If you want to get a little bit more information on anything here, this is the place to do it. These are very thorough. I'm still going through some of these myself just to kind of bone up on some of these different uh what they've done to update the effects and things like that. So um, yeah, that's the place to look if you want to find everything that's new. But I hope, like I said, this is enough to get you going. Have fun exploring Live 11. So um, yeah, happy producing. I'll see you guys soon in another Sonic Academy tutorial. Take care. Thanks everyone for watching. We really appreciate the support from you guys. If you liked this video, then you know, smash that like button. And if you want to be notified about new content, hit the subscribe and the bell notifications. Peace.